We are currently under the topic of cryptography. cryptography thank you very much. Cryptography, all that codes, encryption, which is why we're looking at prime numbers. Except, do you remember why? What do prime numbers have anything to do with encryption? Yes, Sandra. The RSA encryption. Okay, so we had a look at this particular example of ways to encrypt messages, right? And we know this is really cool, this is a very clever way of doing it because even if you know how to encrypt something, you don't at all know how to decrypt it. It's much harder and it's all about the maths of prime numbers, okay? It's really easy to put them together, very hard to tease them apart, okay? So that's why we're kind of digging into prime numbers. Now, <coughs> very last lesson um, on Friday afternoon, you might remember we looked at some videos, we looked at some interesting things. We did a particular proof for how many prime numbers there are. Do you remember how many there are? Infinite. There's an infinite number, that's right. And um, if you can't remember the proof, it's really, really a very elegant and short proof. It's very, very clever. Um, Euclid's proof, right? So we learned that there is an infinite number of prime numbers. But what he didn't answer was how many prime numbers are there? In terms of like, okay, for example, let's list out some numbers. So, if I look at the first 10 numbers, okay, how many numbers are prime out of the first 10? I think, if I'm counting right, it looks like there are one, two, three, four. Four primes out of 10, right? So, well, that's not approximately, it's 40% in this case, right? That's why I chose 10, right? But are 40% of all numbers prime? What do you think? Do you think it would be more or do you think it would be less? But sir, there's an infinite amount of numbers, so how can you say how many there are? That's a very, very good question, right? So, hold on, you're like, we, we've actually done a bit of thinking about this, right? There's an infinite number of primes, but there's also an infinite number of, well, these are the, um, these are the natural numbers, right? So if you wanted to know a proportion, you would divide, wouldn't you? Wait, uh-oh. <laughs> we've, we've, we've looked at infinity enough to know this is this is a bad idea. You don't want to do this, okay? Because I mean for starters, it looks like it's hundred percent. But hundred percent of numbers are not prime. Okay. So how many of them, like not just there will be infinity, but what kind of proportion are we talking about for how many prime numbers there are? Well why don't we have a look? Why don't we have a look? We've got forty percent here. Let's do the next ten. Okay, so Let's have a look here. And by the way, please write down these numbers with me because we're going to use them in a second, right? This is not just for illustration. All right, so I added on another 10, okay? So how many of these are prime? Let's see, 11? 13? 17? And 19, huh, no way. that's interesting. So I've got 40% here, I've got 40% here. So far, it looks like it's holding. But let's see what happens. You go one more. 21? <laughs> okay, and now things do start to change, don't they? Let's have a look. No, no, yes, no, no, no. No, no, yes. okay. So you're like, oh, that kind of dropped off a bit quickly, didn't it? 40%, 40%, 20%, 40 so all up, what have I got? I've got 10 <coughs> out of 30, so now it's dropped down to 33%, right? And you can probably logic it out, think about this, right? Have a look at the gaps with me, because this is another interesting piece of maths, right? What are the gaps between the prime numbers, okay? Well, look, I have a gap of one here, right? And then a gap of one, gap of one. Okay, what's the next gap? I have a gap of three. Oh, okay. So in here, I haven't got a gap of, I've got a gap of zero there, consecutive prime numbers. Okay. Then what happens? You got a one again? You got a three there. Uh, a one. Then what happens? Then from here to here, you've got a three. So you just had ones and threes, and then what happens? You get, a six. you get a string of five. What's the opposite of a prime number? A composite. a composite number. Five composite numbers in a row. Now, think about this, right? As I go further, 
what's going to happen to these gaps? They're going to become larger and larger. Why is that? Why do they get larger? Oh! Yeah? There you go. Because this is what we learned last lesson. Because like when you start, when you start timesing the um, prime numbers, obviously if you times it by a larger prime number, it's going to become a larger number later on. So okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so we're starting to get to it. You think about it this way. Here's another way to think about it. Okay. <laughs> think about what these numbers are in here. Okay, these particular composite numbers. Okay. We can do their um, their prime factorizations, can't we? Okay. Well, in fact, I'm just gonna I'm gonna run out of space if I do all of the trees, right? Um, Twenty four. Think about it. Go all the way down. You're gonna fit in. You're gonna fit in two cubed times three, right? That'll give you twenty four. Oh, about this guy? Five square, right? Oh, about this guy? Two by thirteen. Three times three. Three cubed. And this one here. Two squared times seven, right? Now. Think about this. This is the reason why we got a longer string and we are going to get longer and longer runs of prime numbers. Uh, sorry, composite numbers. It's because look at, look at what these are built from. Okay? Clearly, these must be built from the red numbers. Yes? Well, the more red numbers you have to build from, the more composite numbers you'll be able to make in a row. Look up here. Look up here. The reason why you have so few composite numbers is because you don't have many prime numbers to build with yet. Right? Look at here. You get to two, you get to three. It's like the only thing I've got to build from are one, two, and three. No wonder I don't have many options. Okay. So these gaps, they're going to get longer and longer and longer. So yes, the prime numbers are going to space out. How are they going to space out? There's a theorem for this. It's called the prime number theorem. It's a big deal. Okay. The prime number theorem. It states how many prime numbers you <coughs> ought to expect under a given number. It talks about this frequency, right? So here's what it says. Uh, the number of prime numbers less than n. So you pick, pick some number. Any value of n, right? And the number of prime numbers you'll find underneath this number is approximately equal to n on log n. Now you guys have just learnt what logs are, but just to remind you, okay, when you see ln, that stands for the natural log, that's what this is in here, so log natural, okay? So it means, it means base e, log base e of n, okay? So what that means is, what power do I raise to do I raise the power of e to in order to get m? Okay, so I'll give you a quick example. Um, you guys might remember e is the number 2.71, 8, 2, blah, 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 blah. We looked at that. So think about this. What would this be? It's, it's the number that I have to raise e to to get e. And that number, of course, is 1. So for example, if that's 2.71, that's 2.71, think of a number, you just do a bit of a guess. doesn't have to be exact. What would you expect this to be equal to, roughly? What number do you think you'd have to raise e to in order to get as an answer? Nine. It'd be between two and three, right? Because this is, if you call that, if you go approximately, actually is it between two and three? Yeah, it is, right? If you call that approximately three, you'd have to raise it to the power of two to get to nine, wouldn't you? Um, but of course, this is not quite three. It's a bit lower than that. So you can go for your calculator now, and I'd like you to get it out. Actually, log base e of nine. So you can just go straight to the um, natural log button ln. You should have a button just for that, okay. and go log nine. So you get two point two point one nine. Okay. So as we said, it was between two and three. Right. So what you can do is, and I said this is approximate, right? Because you're going to get a decimal out of this. Let's try this for 9. Let's try this for 9. Okay. So what is what is 9 over log 9? Well, you just worked out what log 9 is. Right? So do 9 divided by log 9. <coughs> that should give you a decimal. What do you get? 4, four, four point something? Yeah, 4.09. 4.09. Okay, well, let's have a look. Here's 9, right? How many primes do I get under 9? Four. Answer, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh. Hmm. Now, it's worth mentioning, and you can go ahead, it's not, it's not that hard to try it out. And this is part of the reason why I asked you to write out these numbers with me, right? 
if you pick any arbitrary number, okay, it, it's not always conveniently so close to that, okay? For instance, if you try, say, 26, let's just try it, okay? So if you go 26 over log 26, what do you get? 7.98. 7.98, so you're looking at close to 8, right? But we know there's actually, this is the ninth one, so you're not quite on, right? But like I said, it's approximate. And for greater values of n, the bigger n gets, the closer this will get. Okay, so if m was like a million, how many prime numbers would there be less than a million? Well, actually, why don't we go ahead and work it out? Because I don't want to go ahead and write them. So there's a million over log a million. What's it equal to? Um, 72,000? 382 point something. Is that right? Someone want to double check that? Yeah, I have six zeros. Yeah? You okay with that? Alright, now just a quick question. We said 40%. Still 40%. At this point, we were looking at 33% because it was 1 in 3. Okay. So what's this? Way less, right? How many? If it's 72,000 out of a million, 7%. Okay, so what we were predicting, that these gaps would get bigger and we'd have less and less prime numbers, that's borne out by this theorem. Okay, 7.2%. And I guess as we continue, right, you'd get less and less and less. If you're curious why, it's because of this guy down here. Some of you might have had a look at this. This is what the graph of the log function looks like. And it, it tapers off. It gets it's 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 still increasing, but it slows down. It slows down. You can think of that a little bit like the prime numbers. They're slowing down. I'm getting them less frequently as I keep going. Yeah. The gap between the prime numbers. Um, is it always going to be a prime number? No, because one's not prime. Oh, I mean like odd. Numbers. An odd number? That's a good question. I'll let you have a think about that. I haven't. I haven't written them up. <coughs> Hold on, pause for a second. I'm going to pose that question to everyone because I think we have enough information to answer it. Okay. The question was, uh, we have rows of 10, right? Oh, you turned. Lucky you. I have very good aim. I would have hit you. <laughs> we have rows of 10 here. The question that was posed was, will any of these rows, if I kept going, will any of these rows end up having no primes in them? I think we know how to answer this and how. What do you reckon, Brendan? Well, if by the hundred million there's about seven in every hundred, that means that there's ten rows and seven prime numbers, so that has to be some without any. Okay. Let's see if you followed that, because that was exactly right, okay? You use this logic here, right? Not, wow. not play straightforward, by the way. Even after it's explained to you, you're like, hmm? Um, this is saying by the time we've counted to a million, on average, 7% of the numbers will be prime. Okay? Don't forget, by the way, according to this very small sample we've seen, <coughs> they're going to get less frequent, right? Which means that actually, if I took, say, like the last section, like you want to do an average here, right? This is across the whole population. We know early in the population, the primes are quite frequent, right? So in order to make this an average, that have to be even less frequent than this by the time you're getting to the end of the list, right? But let's just say it was 7%, okay? That means I'm going to have 10 rows here, and on average, there will only be 7 of them that are prime. Out of the 10 rows, that's 100 numbers, right? So clearly, 7 primes across 10 rows, I've got to at least miss 3 of the rows, right? And in fact, I probably miss more than that. Make sense? Okay. Good. So, the prime number theorem, it gives us all of these weird, cool insights. The proof for it, unfortunately, it's a bit mathematically involved. So I'm going to leave us off that. But um, this is what's interesting.